Is it time to replace your front brake pads on your Yamaha Rhino? Today, I'm going to show you how. Replacing the front brake pads on these Rhinos is pretty easy to do. If you're not sure if you need to replace them yet or not, we're going to show you how to inspect those brake pads so you can be confident that you're making the right repair. Now, we're working on a Yamaha Rhino 660. The process is going to be similar for the 450s and the 700s, but just make sure you reference your model-specific service manual for more information and specs. For parts, we have the Tusk Sintered Metal Brake Pads. But if you want to go with something else, we have a lot of different options on our website. We also have some brake cleaner and a little bit of grease for our caliper pins. To do this job, we have our drain pan, safety glasses, rags, some rubber gloves, C-clamp, some common hand tools, including a 5mm Allen, 12mm and 17mm sockets, a torque wrench, bungee cord, toothbrush, and some masking tape. The best way to keep tabs on your brake pad life is to just use a flashlight, look down in between these wheel spokes and you should be able to see how much brake pad is left. But since it's kind of hard to see with the camera, we're just gonna remove this wheel to give you guys a better look. In our service manual, it tells us that one and a half millimeters of thickness is the minimum for our brake pads. So we set our depth gauge on our digital caliper to that. And if we set that up, you can see one and a half millimeters is just below the top of that groove right there. So if you're getting pretty close all the way down in your groove on your pads, you know they're bad. But really it's just a common sense thing. If you can see that there's hardly any pad left, make sure you get these replaced. So if we look down here on ours, we can see these pads, they're almost like new. So for us, we actually wouldn't have to replace them, but we're still going to show you how to do this job, so we will replace them. Once you have the wheel off, you'll notice there's two pins going through the brake pads coming from the back side. We're going to loosen those up with a 5mm Allen socket. Once those are loose, you have two 12 millimeter bolts holding the caliper on. We'll go ahead and remove those completely. And once you have the caliper off, if you're not gonna be working on it for a second, make sure you hang it using a bungee cord. Then from here, we're gonna remove these two pins that hold the brake pads in, and then remove the pads. And to get these pins out, you might have to press on these pads just a little bit because they are going to be spring loaded in there. And then once you pull these pins out, you want to inspect them. If there's any deep grooves on them, you're going to want to get these replaced. So from here, you can see there's a little bit of grime on these pistons. We need to clean those off before we push these back into the caliper. And another thing you want to check before you get too far is to make sure these caliper pins slide smoothly. If they don't, there's a chance that you might have seen uneven wear on your brake pads. You also want to check the pins that hold the brake pads in place. These pins can get some grooves worn into them and cause the pads to wear at an angle. So if you see any grooves in the pins, make sure you get them replaced. And one last thing you want to look at is your brake rotor. So on this, if you find a bunch of deep grooves in there, if you run your fingernail across there and it catches on them, or there's a big lip towards the top right here, then you're gonna wanna get this replaced. Now there is a thickness measurement in your service manual. You can take that measurement, but again, typically if you feel a big groove at the top, that's when you're gonna need to replace them. And then from here, we're just gonna use our brake cleaner to clean all the parts, and we do have a drain pan underneath to catch anything that's coming off. Now, one more thing with these pistons, if they're really grimy and the spray isn't taking all that stuff off, you can use a toothbrush and help scrub those off before you press them back in. Once you have everything cleaned up, you're gonna set the old inboard pad back into place, and we're gonna use a C-clamp to push both of these pistons in, and you can use some masking tape on the backside if you're concerned about scratching your caliper. But for us, we're just gonna 
use our C-clamp directly on the caliper. So you can see both of our pistons actually pushed in really easy. If that's not the case with yours, then you might have to rebuild this caliper. But before you do that, you want to check your brake fluid level. Maybe somebody added fluid since the pads were replaced and there's too much fluid in there and it won't let the fluid go back far enough to let these pistons go in. So that's something you may need to check. And if the system is over full, definitely open that cap up and let some of that fluid out. Then from here, we're going to remove that old pad again. And for those of you that those caliper pins, if those are gummed up on yours, we're going to show you how to take care of that. So all you need to do, you have that rubber boot, be sure not to tear it. I'm just kind of going to hold on to that and pull the mounting bracket out. And then from here, all you need to do is wipe the old stuff off. A lot of times if they're sticky, you might see just some dried up grease. You just want to wipe that off. But for us, ours is looking pretty good. So we're going to apply some grease to these pins. And then just slide it back into place. Now as you slide the mount back into place, usually you can push it all the way down and these rubber boots are going to pop back into the groove on that mount. And then from there, all you want to do is wipe off any excess grease. Once you have any of that grease cleaned up, you want to make sure that anti-rattle spring is still in place. If it is, we'll go ahead and install our inboard brake pad followed by the outboard pad. Now this outboard one, you wanna hook it on that pin first. We'll slide that up. And then from the other side, we'll install the two pins. And when you install these pins, you're gonna to have to press up on these pads because that anti-rattle spring is gonna be pressing down on them. So just push up on them and line them up with the holes. And these two pins get torqued down to 13 foot pounds, but we'll do that once the caliper is mounted back on the machine. Now, before we set the caliper in place, you wanna make sure the brake pads are pushed apart. If they're not, just use your fingers, press them apart, make sure the, that inboard pad is lined up with this mount still in between those two ends. We'll slide that into place and install our mounting bolts. Now, these mounting bolts, they get torqued down to 35 foot-pounds. From here, we're going to do the same steps on the other side, and you also want to make sure before you use the machine, make sure you pump up your brakes so the pads are actually touching the disc. And then once we do that other side, we'll talk about the break-in procedure. From here, we just need to remove our machine from our lift. And keep in mind, your first ride out, these brakes aren't gonna stop as good. So just kind of take it easy on them and let them break in that first ride. And then after that, you'll be good to go. Now, if you need these brakes or any other parts for your machine, check out our website. We have a lot of different options on there. And if you wanna see more helpful content like this, subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.